Guten Tag und willkommen. My name is Matthew Johns and I'll be your captain for this journey to software defined infrastructure. Don't worry, the cheese isn't going to last far too long. We will stop with the flight analogy shortly. Um, but joining me on the flight deck today, we have uh, Manuel Yene from uh, QSC, one of our customers, and Tora, Tora Barr from SUSE, one of our systems engineers. And uh, Manuel is going to be giving you a brief journey through QSC's trip onto Q OpenStack and Ceph. So without further ado, I will hand you over to our co-pilots and leave you to it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Matthew, and welcome to Berlin. Um, I'm new in OpenStack and at QSC we are new in OpenStack for this year and I want to tell you um, about our journey, um, about why we need an infrastructure as a service platform, about what were our decision about which platform we are using because there are many platforms in the market why we are using OpenStack at least, what is our design in the OpenStack platform in our data center, and what are, what are we doing with the OpenStack installation in our data center. So this is what happened when you start your application and there is no data from the server. I call it the uh, app data gap, and that happened to many of our customers because they are not able to deploy enough servers as they need. The reason is uh, any application today, you know it at your, in your smartphone, doesn't have data in the application. All data is loaded over the network from any data center, from any server, from any storage system, and so on. And you can deploy a new application every day, but it's hard to deploy new server every day with a traditional setup, with installation and cabling and so on. So that's the reason why we decide to need um, a new, a new platform in our data centers. We have data centers in complete Germany and normally our customers are using co-location services in those data centers. They deploy their own infrastructure, their own hardware in their racks and so on and they have the problems, uh, what happened if I need new server, if I fastly need new servers. So we look at the requirements of our customers and first of all they want a platform with zero downtime. So that's the wish from all customers, I think so. Everyone wants to run their services on an IT platform with no doubt, no doubt downtime. The one the platform with is scalable. They don't want to order new hardware boxes and wait many weeks or months to install them. They want just click and have new resources, network or compute or something else. And a new requirement is they need it geo-distributed. So in the last presentation from Red Hat we heard edge computing. It's a uh, Today I heard many presentations with edge computing, 5G, that's the reason why the customers need the application deployed in many data centers around the country or 
around the world. So we are, we are only a local a German vendor, although we can only deploy the servers in Germany. But uh, that's a hard requirement at this time for the customers to deploy the software or the infrastructure in different data centers. Sure, they want to save costs. They want to go back from hardware invest, from the complete invest. They want to save costs at all from management costs and something else. And the customers want a central management interface. When they have own installations in different data centers, the most users have different software or different platforms and have a management interface for each data center or for each platform and uh, they are sick of them. So they need a all-in-one platform for all workloads in all data centers. They have servers. And they only want to pay for what they are using. Everybody knows that they are, that's, that's the reason why the hyperscalers, so the so-called hyperscalers like AWS or Microsoft Azure became so big because uh, they were the first in the market who have a pay as you use model, but they have many problems to to give the to solve the requirements for for German or for other local um, industries uh, about some specialized requirements. Okay, the next thing is. There are not also customer requirements in our decisions. Uh, we have also own requirements as provider. So um, first of all, we need a platform who is completely automated because um, you see it before. Um, we need zero downtime for the customers. We want to save costs, and that's only possible if we have a platform which we don't need to attach with our hands every day, doing the, the daily work load every day. We want to run scripts on it. We want to integrate the platform in our processes in our billing systems and our support systems. So we need a completely um, automatization. We need a service portal for our customers. We are a hosting provider. And it's important that we have a platform with a multi-tenancy feature because we want all, only one platform for all of our customers. Otherwise, we are not better than the customers itself. Many, many same installation in one data center. And the most important thing for, for us as service provider is the network capabilities of the infrastructure as a service platform. The reason is we have many customers with MPLS, with VPN networks, we have customers with own data centers and we want to have a platform where we can connect every data center in the world. It doesn't matter if it's our own data center in Hamburg or in Frankfurt 
or if it's a customer data center, or if it's only a edge data center, we want to connect all of them together and want to able to have a network connectivity or maybe also a workload shift. If on our side there are also an open stack platform, in our example, we can shift workloads to other clouds. That's the next point. We need a hybrid capability of the platform because in, this is a special thing, I think it's a special thing in Germany. We have very strict laws and for uh, data protection it could be necessary for a customer to have dedicated hardware or separated hardware for his own data. So we need a platform where we are able to separate hardware for each customer with own hypervisors, but have the same service portal, the same management interface for the customer. The next thing is um, we have many co-location customers with legacy hardware. Um, you can imagine uh, when you bought new hardware for one million dollar or something else just two months ago, you don't want to uh, crash it and throw it away. You want to still use it anymore. So we need a way to connect, to connect those hardware to a new modern infrastructure. And that's it, the, the hybrid thing. We can use dedicated hardware and connect it to the new platform. The same is for specialized hardware. Um, I heard many presentations with uh, special graphic CPUs or something else. Uh, I'm not sure what's the next thing next week. Maybe our special CPUs and we can connect them or we want to connect them with a hybrid setup uh, in a dedicated rack to another cloud. So we need different regions. Uh, I mentioned before we have some data centers uh, around Germany and we want to have a global, a global platform overall. And we are a business provider. We have a, a big management team in our company, but we need for the main platforms, we need uh, to be certified in each way and we need to have uh, a support for our platforms. So that was a very big point for, for us to have uh, an infrastructure platform where we can get support at any time we need it. So we look at the market and there are many players with infrastructure as a service platforms. Um, this is CloudStack, if anybody knows it. We also have a cloud stack installation in our data center. Uh, it's quite good, but uh, the cloud, uh, <coughs> the, the, um, the community is really dead. It's a very low community, not so active, and um, there are. I, I, I'm not sure if there are any any big vendor who supply commercial support on this platform. So for sure we look at VMware. We also have a VMware, a very big VMware installation for um, special workloads. We do a big SAP hosting 
we did this with VMware. Uh, it's running good, it's no problem, but um, we have price cost problems with VMware in a big infrastructure environment because of the license fees. And we have problems in the, in the APIs. Um, I'm sure VMware has a very big, a very rich API, but it's not open. You need to use what you get from VMware, and if they don't want that you do it on this or this way, they don't allow it to you, and you have no chance to change it. So there are open nebula. I'm not sure what happened with this. Or I think it was too small and have too less capacity, too less features. Uh, there are also other commercial vendors like Nutanix. I think it's it's more a hyper-converged infrastructure, but uh, we look at it. It was very interesting, but uh, it was uh, expensive than VMware. And uh, OnApp, it's it's also a very cool solution, but uh, the network stack was not so richful as we needed. So what we are using, we are using OpenStack. That's the reason why I'm here. And um, OpenStack uh, give us all, all the requirements we need. All the requirements I mentioned we had from our customers and from ourselves. And um, I am very lucky with this because um, I personally very like the open source community. And um, I think uh, this is the reason um, why, why we need to use it because it, the, the open source community he give us the flexibility to use the product as we need it, as our customers need it. So the big problem was we have, I mentioned it, uh, a big uh, management team, but we have very less experience in OpenStack. I think the most of you know it. OpenStack is not just plug in and boot up. It's a very complex installation, a very complex platform. You can do everything you want with it, but not in one day, not with the vanilla sources. So that's the reason why we look at the market. There are many companies, vendors on the market who offers commercial support or complete setups, own software products. Red Hat, uh, also here, um, Canonical, Marantis, and so on. Um, Huawei is, is running the, the biggest, I think the biggest German public cloud with the, with the telecom, the open telecom cloud. Uh, but we decide uh, for SUSE because um, the platform we wanted with all the projects, projects we need, like the web interface and uh, the, the complete technical base layout. Um, SUSE were the only one on the list before who can support all projects we needed. And uh, the next thing is SUSE is also located in Nuremberg, like our head office, like our head data center and we had a very good connections to SUSE, and that's the reason why I can welcome <laughs> Tore. <Yeah. clears throat> 
So, hello from my side. I will do a, just a short break, as usual in the plane commercial. Um, but be sure I have no uh, gifts or something that I want to sell. Um, so I want to explain a little bit about what is SUSE, what have we done with QSC. So um, if I'm not wearing this clothes, I'm uh, working as a uh, sales or systems engineer and uh, work together with the QSC guys to get the open stack part up and running. Um, <clears throat> so let's have a look on this open stack uh, cloud uh, product. What are the benefits? We already had heard the requirements we had about the decisions why you have selected us. Um, here are some more points we see here as our uh, benefits. So, um, yeah, OpenStack is complex. So what we built around this is uh, a provisioning and management tool set up. Um, we try to integrate whatever you need for running OpenStack. Um, we try to be, yeah, if you saw our message, we are often called the open open source company. This is not a copy and paste uh, uh, error. Um, we just want to say, okay, use what you need for achieving your requirements. If it's not from SUSE, it's okay. If there is an open standard which is connecting to it, we are fine with it. So um, we want to be inter interoperability uh, as much as possible. And yeah, one of the nice thing with QSC, we are uh, living in more or less the same town, um, so you have a direct connection to this. SUSE is based since 25 years in Nuremberg, um, has a lot of experience how to support open source software in the enterprise market, and um, this is something, especially in the German area, you can use because um, the people speak the same language, mostly in Frank. Uh, so, uh, sorry, um, <clears throat> and um, same time zone. So it's a direct connection. The mission which we see behind the open stack part. So if you are going with vanilla, um, it's, it's likely the same as if you want to deploy Linux. Nobody in the market at the moment will compile and create its own kernel. You are using a distribution. Um, why is it and why are we, we talking about this uh, with, with OpenStack? Um, everyone who has tried it and it's uh, proven by a lot of researchers, um, it's uh, complex, complex to configure, complex to deploy and to upgrade. So the operation itself is complex. Um, and as we at People, um, we are quite common to use complex um, uh, technologies like a car. So we are all able to drive a car. We are also, most of us, are able um, to order a car. But if you go to a, a car manufacturer, you just say, okay, I, I want uh, this seats and I, I need a an, 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 uh, driving wheel. Uh, on it. I don't need it. I have it already. Please use my. Um, if you don't select all the parts on your single uh, uh, systems. Um, you look at the configurator, say, okay, this is what the uh, car vendor has already prepared for us. I select the color and say this to use this engine and um, after six, nine or whatever months, depending on the um, engine you have you chosen currently, um, you will deliver and get a nice car. And it is ready to use. So it's packaged, um, it's optimized, and you have a service partner. If there is any problem with this uh, car, you can get, just go to him and he will fix it. And this is the same we want to use and do with OpenStack. So we package it, we distribute it, uh, we make sure that the quality, reliability, and the performance um, fits to your requirements and um, that there is an update and upgrade parse. So this is also very important. As you know, OpenStack is very uh, fast with your new versions. You need an uh, idea how to move in production from one release to the next one. And this is what we call then enterprise support.
Let's have a look a li little bit more in detail what we have in the cloud architecture. What you see there in the orange part, these are um, OpenStack releases. Uh, oh, I see there is a copy and paste error. Um, it's not Newton at the moment. We are talking about Cloud 8. This is Pike release. Um, but these are the normal vanilla OpenStack packages. So there is nothing from us put uh, in addition or removed. This is just open source OpenStack. Um, we added everything which is needed to run it on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, for sure. This is the base operating system. Um, and um, you can use every physical um, infrastructure which is supported for SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. So you have a continuous support stack from the physical infrastructure up to the APIs. Um, also, these boxes are not shifted a little bit. This is... Um, uh, uh, was intended to have it because what we create are just OpenStack APIs. And here you are open to you whatever you want as a billing engine or a managing engine. If it's following the OpenStack APIs and they are open, this is why they are called OpenStack, um, you can use it. So you have the freedom to choose whatever you want as a management system. This is very important. Besides this, we have everything which you run uh, need as a basic service, so like a pacemaker to make the control uh, services high available, also the compute nodes, you can make them highly available with uh, pacemaker. Um, and we have a lifecycle management tool, so we take care about how to install all these packages on the different nodes, um, more or less like you are using a cloud itself. So if you need new hardware, you just um, get the server into the rec. It has to be connected to power, to the network. It will power up. It will be recognized uh, from the lifecycle manager and say, OK, yes, put it as this role. It should be a new compute node, a storage node, a uh, network node, and it will install it automatically. You don't have to get in touch with any console if you don't want. So this is the basic idea of what about our OpenStack distribution. Um, so we're getting let now more a bit less out of this uh, commercial part. Um, what were the design criteria for the architecture we built for QSC? Um, first of all, we heard zero downtime. Zero downtime in OpenStack is a little bit different. Um, we have the focus to have an um, high available control plane, so we should be ever be able to communicate with OpenStack and start new instances. So this is one design code. On the storage side, um, we want to get rid of any legacy um, shared storage device, so we want to just use just local disk. Uh, but we want to have live, um, um, storage classes, so we have SSDs and uh, spinners. Um, and this was a decision to use uh, Ceph as the um, main and only um, uh, data backend. This is used for the users, so as Cinder backend, but also for the infrastructure itself. If you know a little bit about Pacemaker, you need a Stonis device. And so we also use here Ceph as the Stonis device. Um, then we want to have a um, dedicated network setup. So we separated all networks. We have a uh, dedicated management network. We have a dedicated storage network and um, a dedicated OpenStack network. On the other side, we created some central system management servers, which could be used for um, the OpenStack part and for the Ceph part. Um, we looked a little bit at monitoring. Uh, when we started with QSC to discuss it, Monaska was already available, but um, quite heavy. So we decided to say, okay, in the first step, let's try to integrate this OpenStack in the already existing um, monitoring. Um, during the journey, we see that it was not really the best decision, so this is something um, it will be redesigned, so this is at the moment a little bit white space. And we see that we should be open 
to fulfill all the new ideas about networking. So um, we already heard there are a lot of regions which has to be connected and this has also be bound to the um, OpenSec installation. Really a high level design what we created here. Um, so we have an uh, HA uh, OpenStack control cluster exists in, in reality in uh, out of three nodes uh, in the beginning. Um, we have separated KVM nodes. Um, we have an uh, installation management server, an admin node which controls everything. Um, then we have a dedicated Ceph, Sof, um, SUSE um, distribute, no, so SUSE enterprise storage, so SES, as a software defined storage. It's a lot of S's you have to play, uh, say here. And um, with this, we create all these networks separately. So, really, just a brief overview about the um, architecture. If you need some details, uh, I believe we can discuss this uh, in, a, in a smaller group after the session. So this is how we as SUSE helped QSC to um, deliver and to fulfill the requirements and uh, created this as a base and um, now it's growing. And um, maybe uh, I can come back and uh, take over to tell a bit, little bit about the future and the users, use cases. Yes. So thank you from my side. <laughs> thank you, Tora. Um, yes, Tora said already uh, that we had some problems with our old monitoring systems. Uh, we were using uh, CheckMK and Narios, uh, and that are very cool systems, and they do very good jobs for our co-location customers and so on, but uh, they were not flexible enough for uh, the new OpenStack platform. So we set up a new monitoring environment uh, with those components. I'm not a technical guy, so I can't explain <laughs> those to you, but uh, as Toro mentioned, uh, we have also some technical guys uh, here at the summit. Uh, I'm sure they can explain it to you. So um, the last thing is uh, we talk about the software, the infrastructure, but uh, the software need hardware to run on it. And yes, it's, uh, it's a open software and the, uh, you can run it on every X86 hardware, I think so. Um, that's a benefit of OpenStack, but we decided to run it on enterprise hardware. The reason is we want to have uh, a setup with a complete um, certification with, uh, with SUSE because, uh, oh, cool feature. HP hardware is also, uh, HP is also a partner of SUSE, so um, with this hardware, uh, maybe I put some more coins in the machines. I'm not sure what's happened. Okay. I have uh, four minutes to go. Um, so that's the reason why we just decide for the HP hardware. Um, the next point is uh, I promised you to tell what we are doing on those platform for what we are using it. Uh, on the left side, we have the colocation business with our colocation customers in the data centers. And on the right side here is the new virtual data center with OpenStack from the SUSE OpenStack platform. And we put them together in our base product so you can use colocation 
and virtual data center together with uh, network connectivity. And then I don't uh, read all the management and service uh, products. We, we offer a wide range of management services like operating system management or firewalls or domain services on those platforms for our customers. The next thing we are doing uh, right now um, is to take a closer look at the networking part of OpenStack because uh, we want to have a complete flexible software defined network and a or software defined wide area network. We have cloud connects in our network to the hyperscalers, for example, and we want to be able to connect any virtual data center in our OpenStack environment with one click to Azure or AWS or any customer data center and so on. Completely software defined. For next year, I hope we are here. No, the next year will not be in Berlin. I'm, I'm not sure where the next summit is. <laughs> but uh, the next summit, we want to talk about this. Um, because the next steps, I think that are the logical next steps, is containers on OpenStack. And some of you are wondering uh, about this logo. This is a uh, hardware, this is a firewall vendor. We are planning to do firewall services with Fortinet in the OpenStack environment. Uh, I think it's a very cool thing. You can have hardware firewall features from hardware firewalls in, uh, in a virtual data center. So, There are some partners of QSC. You also see uh, SUSE here and HP, and there are much other vendors. And um, my last slides, my last slide, are some uh, reference customers. Not only of these customers are using the OpenStack infrastructure, but those customers have. Um, own infrastructure in our data centers and want to use OpenStack at, for the next, uh, for testing or for production use. So I'm out of time. I thank you and I wish you a great summit for the next days.